it, if I were to hit the change leader button, if only it were here, it would swap the two of them, and then she'd just be looking off to the right. Okay. So yeah, this is then, just then she'd be like a, coincidence. Okay. Yeah, then she's kind of dreamily <laughs> looking off. Okay. Uh, anyway, all right, so first, first thing, obviously, party paradigms. Colin, you were asking about if anything's changed here. Yes. So same thing. Let's let's delete all these and we can we can kind of start from scratch. So this is how you customize your roles that uh, that happen in battle. So you you can control right now the two characters only have access to Commando, Ravager, and Sentinel. As they level up, they gain access to the other roles. And you can actually kind of decide how you in what order you want those roles to be unlocked. So for now. I'm going to set the default paradigm, the default roles that we use to be Sarah as a magic user and Noel as a, as a fighter. Now the, the new uh, feature is that you can fine tune those paradigms and if you click tune you can cr uh, select normal, cross, or wide and that's basically saying normal is just sort of default, they'll just do their own thing, cross is targeting a specific enemy and wide is trying to spread out the attacks. Okay. Now I like cross because that kind of you know, funnels them towards a stagger and it, it kind of helps the battle. But uh, I'm also going to have a, let's see, Ravager and a Sentinel combo as well. And then why not, I'll actually put in both of us as fighters too. Why not? Why not? There we go. Just because you can. So, yeah, so we're good for now. That's really, I think, all we need. We don't have access to any of the other roles uh, on this save file that I have right here. And then, of course, the paradigms can be can be upgraded, right, with the, uh, the experience points, whatever the Yeah, so the each, well, your roles can be, yeah. The right. paradigms is just the fancy word of saying a collection of roles. Right, right, right. The roles themselves can be upgraded. You learn, they can, basically, all the roles can be leveled up to level 99, and each role has just a ton of uh, different abilities that can be unlocked uh, through leveling up, which let's check that out right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. So let's go into, this is the new Crystarium system, which is vastly improved from the original, which really just forced you to level up in a certain way. So here, you just basically click on Sarah, and the Crystarium goes in a circle. So it's just a circle of upgrades that you continuously spend these points on upgrading. So you'll see I have my pool of points at the bottom, a little bit over a thousand, and I want to spend them in the Ravager role. So I just start spending those points. You see it, it costs 120 to go up to the next level. And uh, as you can see, with each, with each uh, unlock, I'm getting a little bit of health. And then here, I just learned Flame Strike, a new ability and it gives me a little health and a little bit of magic. That's what the wand is. And uh, I'm just going to pour all my points right now into this roll because obviously that's the one I want Sarah to specialize in. Now if I switch over to Noel, there we go. I want him to specialize in the commando role, so I'm going to pour those points and he's going to start to learn his commando abilities. Including. And obviously they don't share points, right? I mean, they each Correct, share. they each have their own pool of points. Most of the time, I'm, I'm almost positive they always have the same amount, because since they're always in a party together, they'll always you know, have the same amount. You can just have them spend them in different ways. Right. Um, so obviously, I've just you know, totally funneled Noel uh, into the commando role. And I think that's it for now. Uh, later on, your Crystarium is going to be filled with monsters. This will all be monsters here that you can each level up and train uh, with their own abilities, but obviously we don't have any monster buddies right now. For equipment, Colin, since you asked, you can have, uh, each character can have a weapon and then a set of four accessories. Now each accessory costs a little bit of basically points to, to equip, so you can't like totally break the game. Too bad. Uh, so, you know, Sarah right now has a capacity of 50 points, so say an accessory costs 10 points to equip, she could have like, you know, all four of those, or she can have one 50 point accessory. Is it always 50 points? No, you can upgrade that through, uh, through the Crystarium as well. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave the rest of that for later. So let's head out here and uh, continue on with our quest. Poster alert. Vidiot13 <laughs> asks, roughly how long was your playthrough and how many hours can we expect? Good question. For a, uh, for a pretty normal playthrough, I, I did the full main quest, a couple side quests mixed in. I clocked in at just about 33 hours. So much shorter than the original game, but also I only... Remember I was talking about those fragments, those memory mm -hmm. fragments you can collect through side quests? There's a total of 160 memory fragments in the game. Mm. By the time I was done beating the main story, I had only collected about 30 or 40 of them. I see. So, uh, huge post-game content in this game. Um, definitely, like, just a lot of stuff you can do even after you beat it. And as one of my favorite things in a JRPG, after you uh, complete the game, you can go back and, like, just mess around, do Very side nice. quests. That was going to be my next question. So yes. you don't have to, like, leave the, uh, the you know, Final Fantasy VII style, leave Sephiroth over there while you're yes, going exactly. the weapons. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's not like he's just chilling there the whole time, but right. you can actually uh, go and... 
I'm gonna take a swig of water. Go for it, you've earned it. Thanks, buddy. Video 13, we will be DMing you to get your address so we can send you your poster. Viewers, if you wanna win cool stuff, if you've got questions about Final Fantasy 13, tweet us at IGN with those questions. Good question, Sarah. Flashback time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just ruined the story. Yeah, spoilers, if you haven't played 13 yet, this is the ending of the game. <laughs> there's, Sarah from, uh, there's Sarah from the original with uh, Saz's son, Dodge, mm -hmm. the cute little kid. There's Snow. Everybody's favorite this... character, Hope. Mm -hmm. You loved him, right, Colin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is this actually like the, the scene lifted directly from 13? Pretty much, except, as you'll see now, something happened. Ooh, wait, what's going on? Lightning, lightning's gone. <laughs> she was standing right there a second ago. So this reveals that uh, essentially lightning disappears right at the end of 13. Sarah has, is the only member of the heroes that remembers that she was there. Why, why did she suddenly disappear? They're all under the impression that she's locked away in the pillar uh, holding up Cocoon along with Vanille and Fang. Is there a side quest that explains why Hope's wearing a belly shirt? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> there is no. Not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. Is it, it's a, a hope is? <laughs> you, or you mean snow? No, yeah, you, you, you see a little bit of midriff there. Where, where, what do you show me? You're <laughs> talking about hope, hope or, or hope, so. right? I the silver haired so. kid? Yeah. There's no midriff there. There's no midriff there. He has, Pan down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, move the, ca the camera I down. can't. I wish I could. I can't in a pre-rendered scene. We're like ruining the emotional climax here. I'm sorry. Anyway, so yeah, Sarah, obviously, she's just the only one left with this memory of, uh, of lightning. And she's totally devastated. And said congrats. Killa5150 is wondering, what do you think about the DLC? Do you think it will have additional story or playable characters? Yeah, I mean, not, not confirmed for the U.S. yet, so I don't really know. I think reports out of Famitsu have stated that there would be some story-related content. I don't know if that means that we're going to get, like, a continuation of the story, or if that means that we're going to get some maybe parallels, like, what you know, what's Lightning up to this whole time? Mm -hmm. But I do know that there will definitely be added content, not just from, you know, in the Coliseum, but I think there's also going to be some extra missions and stuff, too. And I'm, I'm ambivalent about that t topic. I think it's ambivalent's the right word, right? Kind of yeah, mediocre think, about yeah. it. I, well, I could go either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said I was just making up stories so that I didn't have to face. Let's give choice. a poster to Imris, who asks, "What incentive is there to replay the game? New bosses or new side quests?" Um, definitely, definitely the side quests. I mean, as I said, you can beat the game without even without with maybe doing a quarter of the of the content of the game. Uh, and hold on one second. Let me let's pick. Because history changed. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps, Perhaps history, history changed, changed somehow. Changed. You can you, you have plenty of things to do even after changed. you beat the game. It's not exactly like it's new stuff. It's just it's stuff course, that maybe you haven't possible. gotten to yet. Uh, but there is a cool but thing that you can do when you replay the game. So You're given some special like items that sort of alter the way certain events go, um, and. That's, there's definitely a reason to go back and replay because then using that item, you're sort of giving glimpses into different events uh, that weren't normally accessible. So right now, <clears throat> what we kind of missed because we were all <laughs> laughing at everything is that they're trying to find an artifact which can activate the time gate and then Sarah and Noel can step into the flow of time. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. Is there an overworld map? Uh, no, not in the traditional sense. It is... Uh, that's just the a cat. Keep at Nora house. I guess, that's not a map, that's a cat. That's a cat. So we have to chase okay, the cat. This is this is these are the important tasks you need to do mm -hmm. when saving the world, Damon. Mm -hmm. Chase the cat. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Thanks. Thanks, girl. So what they're wondering is because the Moogle's uh, little um, bobble thing on his head is a little glowing, it indicates the presence of some sort of time magic, and so they're chasing after him to try and figure out what he's trying to tell them. Little do they know he can speak, if you find no. out like in like an hour. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's troubling that we didn't know that sooner. There's the cat. Get him. 
We've got a question here. Oh, well, oh, oh come on. Adorable. Isn't he? She's got you, cat's eyes out. Damon, <laughs> I have an important question for you. Nice would you cat. ever name your, <laughs> Would you ever name your cat after your fiance? After my fiance. Yeah, say you say you uh no, you know not. no. Is that what she does? She, 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 she the, the cat's name is Snow. Yes. She yes. doesn't make a mess in my workshop. I think it's a cute it's, it's a kind cute, of little cute. I probably wouldn't do it. Just in, in case you guys are wondering, Snow is not here because uh, shortly after all these crazy events and lightning disappearing, Snow is pretty much the only one that believes Sarah that something happened to Snow or to to lightning. So Snow goes off to look for lightning and he's been gone for like 3 years. So great, great engagement so far for them. She's adorable. She really does have a face. I thought I could hide it from them. A uh, question here from my giant clock. Oh man. Okay. Man, oh man. That was close. <laughs> I'm glad you enunciated so clearly. Uh, wondering, uh, do you think there's a possibility of thirteen three? Um, I, I guess so. I mean, that's really. It's hard to say, but I think that I don't know. Stay tuned on that. Okay. Yeah. I, th I mean, the way the story ends, there is. It, it seems. It seems like there's there's plenty of room open for the possibility for a, another game. Uh, though that's again just absolutely nothing confirmed. But I'd say that it's very possible. I like how you're, you're just, you're just my choice maker. So I think uh, maybe after this cutscene, Damon, uh, if if uh, if the viewers don't mind, we'll quickly load up a different uh, save file. I'm sure they don't mind. They don't mind, right? And we're we're gonna boot up my ultra super cool save file with tons of stuff unlocked. I can't wait. Now I won't just so the so the viewers know I will I will not like spoil any sto uh, story content, but we are gonna be looking at. Uh, environments that happen outside the opening of the game. So if you're really concerned, uh, you know, go away. No, don't go away. Stay here. But come back for my review at one o'clock. The save file accidentally brings you right to the ending. <laughs> it's, it just starts playing the ending. <laughs> Cancel the live stream. <laughs> no, dear. No. We're gonna give a poster to Cosmo Suzuki, who asks, "Is the old leader dies equals a game over mechanic still here, or is it different?" Uh, you can actually um, now. I'm pretty sure in the original one, if the your one the leader that you had, it, it didn't change out your leader. And and in this game, you actually can. If if Sarah is to fall in battle, uh, and then uh, no, the it automatically changes to no. So you can basically have two chances to survive. But you cannot control the monsters directly. So if if it so happens that both of them die, you're you're screwed. You have to retry the battle. All right, uh, shall, we, shall we open up the save file? Yeah, let's yes. do it. Let's go. Viewers, uh, remember to follow IGN on Twitter. If you have any questions about Final Fantasy XIII, tweet us at IGN. Uh, we still have a few posters to give away. We've got uh, prologue books to give away, a lightning statue, and a copy of the collector's edition of the game. I like this menu, by the way. It's pretty. Yeah, it is nice. The art right. looks old school, like a motto. Uh, I'm, so, pretty, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, last I, night, I uh, Last night I was out at a bar in San Francisco and talking to a girl about Final Fantasy XIII. She was actually a big fan. Oh, she excellent. loved it. Okay. She claimed she thought it had it was developed for with women in mind. She thought oh, it was really? a game that women okay and was particularly there, enjoyed. I okay. wonder if you agreed with that. Or no. uh, interesting. Well, is there? Oh God! Hold on! Hold on! Okay. <laughs> that was really. They were about to show the ending. <laughs> we joke about it. But every, ta every time you load a save file, uh, it, it basically shows um, like what's been happening in your in your game. Yeah. And uh, okay. since since I had just beaten it yeah, and the nice. save file, whew, that was that was close. So this is the historia crux, guys. So this is how we jump through time. There's a lot of information here. Let me break it down for you. This is, for example, here is the area where we just were, New Bodum in the year 3 AF. AF stands for after the fall, so it's after the events of the first game. So the fragments, obviously I got all the fragments in that area, which basically means I did all the story stuff and I did all the side quests in that area. Hmm. And the little glowing uh, symbol means that I unlocked the only time gate in this area. And in some areas there are multiple time gates you can unlock and open up, which in turn give you access to other areas in the game. So in this area, in this area, for example, there are three other time gates you can unlock and travel to three different places. Hmm. So if you'll notice in this view, you can see that it's kind of a matrix of, uh, of different uh, locations and spaces. And look, even this, after I've beaten the game and done a bunch of side quests, there's still several locations that haven't been uh, unlocked yet. And uh, to, to me, that's really cool because that's like a huge post-game content. Um, so hopefully I won't spoil anything for you with the save file. I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna uh, let's head right into the Sunleth Waterscape, which is 
uh, pretty soon after you clear that opening area. Mm. Now this is 300 years in the future, by the way. So just throwing that out okay. there, David. <laughs> <laughs> are you worried all about the grandfather paradox when they're traveling around? Uh, I, I don't think they do, no. <laughs> they, pr they probably don't even know what that is. Okay. That no one actually sees themselves. I don't think that happens at all, unless there's a, there's a side quest where that happens that I didn't unlock yet. Green guy is wondering, do you miss playing as lightning? Um, a little bit. I actually really liked lightning, so I guess a little bit. You get to play her in the like little tutorial opening, just mm. as kind of a cool cinematic moment. But um, so here, uh, here we are, pretty much at, towards the end of the world. Um, so we're in like kind of a jungle-ish area. As you'll notice again, so Colin, just as an example of uh, open areas like this map, is uh, it still kind of funnels you in a direction, but it's yeah, there's it a little breaks off. Area there, yeah, there's there's definitely like you you can basically go wherever you want, and there's a bunch of break off points. And this is actually one of the more uh, straightforward areas in the game, so uh, definitely still uh, much bigger, much better than the original. Uh, where shall we go? Let's swing on a vine and go and get into oh my some gosh. battles. We're we gonna swing on a vine. Yeah, let's do it. Why not? Oh God. Now you'll notice I have one of the greatest monsters of all in my party, a chocobo. Nice. That chocobo is indeed aiding me. That's great. Now because we're like all pretty much super powerful, uh, these enemies aren't exactly going to stand much of a chance. <laughs> but that's fine. One, one hit chocobo of just The chocobo just wrecked the house. house. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you look. Yeah, awesome. yeah. he's really cool. Great. So let's, uh, yeah, let, oh, five stars by the way because I'm go. awesome. See, there, there you go. Um, let's uh, go into the let's go into the main menu if you guys don't mind for a second, and I want to show you guys some of the, the cool stuff that we have access to. So I, I named him Champ because um, he's a chocobo. Uh, now the cool thing is that uh, you'll notice there's a lot of stats here on the screen. The little blue um, uh, icons in the right there are just kind of quick descriptors about the monster, and then he has his own stats for attack, for magic, and then for hit points as well. He's level 26 right now. He's wearing a um, fancy hat. Yeah, no, so that's what I wanted to get at. I kind of have a thing. Every one of the monsters in my command has a, has a sky blue cap on. <laughs> it's like it's like a theme. But you can, basically, you can put, like, for example, on this chocobo. These are little collectible items, adornments you can get, so I can put uh, a backpack on my chocobo. <laughs> uh, I, can, uh, I, can, I can make a little carbuncle riding him around. Where's the sword, the sword, where's the sword this, The sword uh, is also strapped to his back. <laughs> so he has, a, he has he's carrying around a little sword. Um, and then there's there's smaller things like a little gear symbol on the corner there on his wing. Um, oh, what was that? I saw something. Oh, that was the carbuncle. Okay. Anyway, cool little things. But I am all I am all about the do they, do these modify the, the, the sky blue news. At all, no, or? this is completely without point. Okay. It is totally well, sky uh, blue news boy cap. Yeah. Just aesthetic. Yes, aesthetic. Uh, indeed, and then you'll notice that like the all my other like my creature here has the little sky bo sky blue newsboy awesome. cap, and also this creature here. <laughs> so, That's pretty great. It's, uh, this is just what I've what I've gone for. This is the style of the sky boy. <laughs> sky blue newsboy caps. Um, so let's go into the crystarium for the monsters. You'll notice I have like a lot of monsters here. Uh, if we go into Champ's um, crystarium. Um, same thing. Now, uh, the, ver the difference is that each monster has an inherent role. So Champ is always going to be a commando. So he will. He, that's all. That's always what he's going to be. You can't like change him to a magic user. Um, but and the way you level him up is by kind of feeding him items which you collect through battle. So for example, I only have one of these potent essences, which is a class four item, and he he needs four to level up. So he's getting to the point where it's really hard uh, to level him up. Um, but obviously, like uh, if we go to I don't know. What's a bookaboo? Let's level this guy up. So if we, we go to the bookaboo, uh, we would use some potent orbs, and that would level up and give him a huge boost in stats. So that's how the how, that's how each monster levels Does up. Each monster and character have their own constellation. Uh, yeah, well, or each, like each class, class of okay. monster. Okay. Yeah, so like the mm. the that kind of monster, like they all have like a similar. It's similar, but there's there's definitely as you can see just by me scrolling around. There's there's definite differences in, in how all the constellations are laid out, which is cool. Now, <clears throat> you can have three monsters at a time in your paradigm pack. Yes, there's more terminology to learn <laughs> in this game. So that's just the monsters you can access at any time during <laughs> battle. So I have Moss, Champ, and Sharkskin. Shark, that Sharkskin is greedy. He is greedy. He's a greedy dude. Um, but uh, when you customize your paradigms, obviously I have you know uh, a big mix here. So 
I have a bunch where Sarah is a magic user, and then I, I, I mainly use, I actually don't use shark skin at all, but I have like the first two paradigms I have here use champ, and then these other ones are for when I need healing, and that's Moss, because he's a medic. A giant slimy medic. So let's jump back into some battle so we can show them off a little more. After we swing on this vine. Go, go Sarah. <laughs> uh, swing on that vine. Well, she got, she got a little really, stage fright. You didn't get to see her do it. She, uh, well, oh well. <laughs> Un <laughs> underwhelming. Uh, let's give a poster away to... Do we still have posters to give away? We have three more to give away. Right, three it, more posters. Then we're going to get to the books. Then we're okay. going to get to the statue and then the and game. And then end with the game. Uh, Cold Steel 144 asks, how do you unlock the customization items for the monsters? Uh, through a variety of things, uh, things like side quests, things like even some story-related content. It's, it's, they kind of, uh, that whole list of stuff I got just by beating the main game. Um, and by the way, for the sake of uh, ease and for me to keep, uh, to keep talking as clearly as possible, even though I'm doing a horrible job of that, I'm going to just use auto battle a lot, which is uh, just automatically assign smart choices based on the amount of information you've, uh, you've learned about these enemies. So for example, like the Flandit, um, I, you'll notice that he's weak against fire and uh, air magic. So because I've unlocked that information, uh, the system smartly chooses fire and air magic and then deploys those options. What is the halved vulnerability? That means that, um, no, no, that's, that's, a, that's a resistance. So that oh, okay. anything you cast against them, it's the damage oh, okay. is halved. Got it. Uh, so yeah. That means that they're strong and you do not want to use that. Now, by the way, guys, let me introduce to you a very special member of the cast. This is the time-traveling merchant, Chocolina. Oh my gosh. Who is a chocobo, well, it's actually, she's not human, as she, as she mentions in one of her... Welcome. What do your generous hearts desire oh, she's today? She's going to turn around and talk to Noel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right? She's, present <laughs> she's presenting herself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is the shop that you okay. get. <laughs> okay. Well... All right, this is the shop that you have access to, and she's basically your supplier for everything you need from items Chocolina. to weapons. Chocolina. What you buying? What are you buying? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thanks again. If I ever have another problem on my hands, I'll make sure to ask you first. <laughs> so she's like, she's, she, basically tra she basically travels along the timeline with you for, for really no reason. Well, the financial way. gain is what she's doing. Yeah, well, all right, she's, financial gain. She's actually <laughs> she's an enterprising young woman. She is, like, she's an example of how this game, although it has its emotional stuff, it also takes a lighthearted approach. Like, she is hysterical. She has some really funny dialogue, and she's always in these weird situations where you just like saves the world, and then she's standing there like, "You guys want to buy some items?" <laughs> so what are we writing on here? So we're writing on a giant monster that just kind of hangs out. Why does it say live uh, or live? I don't know what we're doing. Live, gonna, yeah. <laughs> live. <laughs> or live. Uh, that means that we're. It's sort of like an interactive cutscene. So um, uh, yeah, I'm basically it's not because we're on a live stream. Uh, correct. It knows. Oh, well, look at those little Maybe guys. We should down try there. to tell you to live. Yeah, just live. Just live, man. Just <laughs> <laughs> you go for advice. it, man. Uh, I want to show you guys, once we get off this giant monster, I want to show you guys another fun feature that we have access to. Uh, in, in the meantime, Alex RPC asks, is there a variable difficulty, and does it go up steeply? Uh, yeah, actually, that's a good question, man. Um, so, man, that's man you just got to live, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is there's a normal and an easy difficulty, and then, like, in some of the post-game content, the, the difficulty is spikes. And it's the, it's the fair kind. Like, it's like, you know, oh, you guys want to fight, like, a ridiculous boss battle? Uh, boss battle? You totally can. <coughs> and you can face these absurd situations and really challenge yourself. Like the weapons. Probably. Yeah, exactly. Similar to that, yes. And, and again, because I, you know, haven't even unlocked all there is to see in the game, um, you know, it's, it's hard to say exactly what some of those battles will be, but it, there's, there's definitely the opportunity for really tough bet. Oh god, I missed. Tough battles. And then, uh, so, you know, towards the end of the game, I would say that for the most part the game is very forgiving. It's, it's very manageable. If you stay on your toes and you level up right, you won't really have a problem with the battles, which is actually something that frustrates me a little bit. Like, I wanted to be challenged more. Now remember, we're towards the beginning of the game, so with my souped up party, we're just, you know, tearing through these guys beating battles in eight seconds that are supposed to take two, over two minutes. But um, it, there's, I, there's really the most challenge I got was right at the end of the game, like literally within the last like dungeon or two, is, and that's when it really, it really ramps up. And I would have liked to see a, a more gradual ramp up in difficulty, but you know, that's, it's 
just kind of the way it goes. It's uh, there's definitely enough post game content where you'll 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 be able to challenge yourself, but in the main story, I don't know anyone that has you know a head on their shoulders and knows Final Fantasy at least a little bit can probably get through this game without a problem, except the final dungeon, which kicked my ass several times. Let's see. Zane, uh, Zane the Great is wondering: Do you upgrade weapons or just buy new ones? Um, you, I think you just buy new ones. I, I haven't been able to upgrade any of my weapons, so unless there's some secret, uh, no, it's all... The, the accessories are really where it kind of the stat-breaking stuff comes into play, where you can try and like find the perfect combination of accessories to get a really powerful build. Now, you can craft new weapons through Chocolina, the lovely assistant that mm -hmm. we, we met earlier. If you give her uh, enough gill and some items, she can uh, make new weapons for you. But under most circumstances, I was fine with just the stuff that I purchased from her um, standard. And going back to Chocolina, yes. un Unexpected Alley asks, so there's only one shop that follows you around the whole game? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, I mean, it's, it's almost fun <laughs> because you build a rapport with this character and she's, 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 a, she's a riot. Sorry, I'm just kind of wandering around killing. Let's, uh, let's go to a new environment after, yeah, I, kill these, after I kill these guys. And let's give a poster to DP Jazzer, who asks, asks, how does the monster catching work? Do you collect certain items? Uh, uh, good question. So the monster catching is, you gotta catch them all, and all you have to, all you have to do, you have to. All you have to do is defeat them in battle, and there is a chance that they will drop a crystal, and that crystal gives you access to them. Uh, pretty much for the rest of the game, and unless you decide to, I, as I, I, I apologize, I failed to mention this earlier, you can, uh, let's go right into that monster menu, you can infuse monsters and basically combine them together to uh, enhance their stats. Mm. So say for example, I just want Champ to just gobble up a fellow commando, I could, could literally feed Flanborg to Champ if I wanted to, and he would gain his passive abilities, but he doesn't, Flanborg doesn't have any abilities to share, so there's really no point in that. Well, let's just let's just look at Champ a little bit more, and then we'll, <laughs> we'll continue on. Let's jump into a new area. Return to the Historia Crux. Viewers, if you have questions about Final Fantasy XIII, too, tweet us at IGN. We still have one more poster to give away. Chris, can we can we show the poster one more time here? This is what we've got. This is what we've been giving away this whole time. Very, Very nice. nice. One more of these to give away. We also have. Uh, we're going to be moving on to these books that sort of bridge the gap between thirteen and thirteen two. We've got this lightning statue and collector's edition of the game. All coming up still. And Ryan's review of Final Fantasy XIII 2 is still coming up. Minutes about, away now. <laughs> in about 45 minutes. Oh, okay. So not, sorry, not minutes away. You know, let's, let's, let's give away that last poster. Let's you just do it. You want to yeah. just do it? Just do let's it. Let's go, Stroll man. You, you go for it, man. <laughs> just live, man. Just live. <laughs> <laughs> that last poster is going to Al Fighter 27 who asks, if a monster dies in battle, is it dead forever? No. Luckily, it is just, nice. it's just dead. <laughs> you, can, you can revive it with a, with a well-placed Phoenix down. All right, so now we are actually in, if any of you guys played the demo, uh, this, uh, this isn't a familiar environment. So actually, you probably already know it, and we'll, we'll leave soon. But, oh, look, wait, who's that over there, Damon? Do you recognize that girl That's talking to this? Uh, yeah, there you go. We're going to leave her alone. So the Brescia ruins, uh, this is two years into Sarah's future. Um, so in, in this, this is actually kind of where the story proper really starts when Sarah and Noel start to travel through time. Oh yeah, and I forgot to show off some of the other Moogle functionality. That's you, guys, you guys should get pumped for that. I don't suppose you can get us into a, a boss fight. Those are, you can't, re, re, you can't revisit those. No, well, uh, yeah, not unless I were to like hunt down a specific side yeah. quest. I wouldn't quite know where to go. I apologize. I wish I could. I'll go to a, like maybe a harder environment though, so where we can uh, face some tougher enemies. Now, your little Moogle friend named Mog uh, can obviously help you out in, uh, you know, guiding you through time. But what you can do is forcibly throw him and he gets really angry uh, <laughs> and he's struggling and crying and I feel really terrible. What you can do is you can throw him at treasure chests that are like out of reach. Like say there was one like up there, uh, you could throw him over what? there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and he will uh, he will get the treasure chest for you. Now what this does, this is actually huge. As, as silly as it is, I obtained one gill, <laughs> one dollar. Um, what this does is this gives the What's the exchange rate. Is that pretty much equal to dollar? Yeah, dollar to dollar. Yeah, pretty much dollar to gill. Um, 
when when Mog, it, like this gives you tons of options for looking around maps. Like it really encourages you to look around because they will hide treasures like completely off the map, like in a place you can't even get to. And so like you can kind of like look around and if you see like a treasure chest floating in the distance, you just chuck your poor Moogle friend through the air and he will get it for you. But it's, there's again definitely more expl uh, exploration and, and it just encourages you to stop and look around and, uh, and try and find like you know, because there could be like treasure chests floating up here, they could be over here, they could be anywhere. Anywhere at all. Also, uh, what I'll do right now is say you see like um, an item kind of floating like right in front of Sarah here, but it's, it's transparent, it, something's not quite right about it. It means it's out of sync with the timeline, so you can actually use Mog's magic, which I will command him to do right here. And it will reveal anything that isn't supposed to be there or mm. got out of sync with the timeline. And that's quite, sort of a cool way to find hidden items. <clears throat> Kenny Noor is wondering, is the casino area and chocobo racing a direct homage to Final Fantasy VII? Hmm. I don't know direct, but it's, yeah, I mean, I guess so. They, they have chocobo racing and they have a casino, so take that as you will. It's certainly no gold saucer. Um, the Final Fantasy VII uh, minigame area, I think, was like one of the best that series has ever had. Well, shall we, shall we go there? Was, shall yeah. we go there? Yeah, of course. Right, let's go. We shall. Let's go. Let's take a let's take a journey through time, Damon. Let's take a journey to the Cave of Monsters. If any of your viewers know what game that is from, you earn extra cool points from me. <laughs> uh, Evil Teddy 3 is wondering: Are there any secret boss battles? Um, yes. I can't tell you what they there are. There you though. go. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's definitely as I said before, the post game content is very strong, and and there'll, there'll definitely be boss battles that you'll want to come back and do all the side quests and find. But I don't want to spoil anything. Mm -hmm. Spiratical wonders, overall, does it hold its own compared to other Final Fantasies? That's a tough question, Helen. I say yes uh, in terms of their modern efforts, but as a fan of their old school efforts, I've always still preferred yeah. you know, the older stuff. That's just my, but that's mm -hmm. just my opinion, you know? Yeah. I mean, everybody will be different. Welcome to Serendipity, which is the casino uh, in uh, 13 at the, end of the, at the end of time and space. Whee! With a giant roulette wheel I can run on. This is the best part of the casino right here. Yeah, that's just it. That's it. This is it. Well, we'll see you later, guys. <laughs> Live stream over. <laughs> oh, there's more uh, chocolinas in there. Uh, yeah, well, those aren't real. the real chocolinas. Well, they're, those, they're, yeah, they're just girls in character. There's also a bunch of cat girls in here because I guess no, no Japanese casino can be without women dressed up as cats, apparently. It's the law. It's the law. <laughs> so let's uh, jump into... Now, by the way, there will be DLC to open up even more uh, features in the casino, including card games, like mm -hmm. actual card games. But for now, all we have are chocobo racing and slots. <clears throat> so let's go do some slots. I'll just show you what that looks like. Here's the cat girl, by the way. We're gonna skip through this. I was trying to get find out. It's like a hot summer's day. She basically she describes to you the mood of the slot machine, so you can decide if you're gonna be able to win or not. The mood of the slot machine is like a hot summer's day. It, it's like a hot I, summer's I don't think I'd day. Play that one. All right. So, insert so I have 155 casino coins. Now the man, the gill to casino <laughs> coin ratio not friendly at all. That is like that is like thousands of gill. So uh, it's definitely costly to be here, but uh, we put in some money. Is this pull the lever. It's a, it's a it's standard a slot, slot machine. machine. Yeah, okay. typical slot machine. Like Super yeah. Mario 2. You have uh, <laughs> you have all the uh, you have all the winning combinations oh, at cup. the top. Yep. Let's see if I can win anything in the next 30 seconds. And if not, oh god. Ah. That, that's the best, is the, the, the little black creatures right there. Come on, hot summer's day. Hot summer's day. I'm gonna do this for another 20 seconds. If I don't win anything, I'm stopping. Yeah. Yes! Won five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's, those are the slots. We're gonna, we're gonna jump out of here because it's, oh wait, sorry, wrong button. Check out the Chocobo races next. Uh, Capri Sun asks, is there an option for Japanese voiceovers in the US version? There is not. Sadly. Has there ever been in a Final Fantasy game? Um, mm, shoot, I don't not, think so. Not to my knowledge. Yeah, no, I, I think like the international versions, like when they re-release it in Japan, and it has the English and Japanese on those on those versions. But I don't think those versions come out here. Mm. Um, they some of Square Enix's other games, including Colin and I's favorite, The Bouncer. You remember that gem? I do like The Bouncer. That had a Japanese voice track. That was a PlayStation Two launch game. You remember uh, that? Yeah. Underrated. You loved I never, it. I never played that game. Uh, I loved it, and I'm like, I, mean, Colin, I think Colin and I are probably the only people in the office that liked it. Look at I all mean, these chocobos. The things were slim on the PS2 for about. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do appreciate it when a game does include the Japanese language track. That's why I always, uh, I like the Disgaea games a lot. I always play those in Japanese. 
So what I need to do real quick is, because I want to race champ, I have to swap him out with another commando, just for the time beating. <clears throat> just put that little dude in there. <laughs> Chichu. 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 I guess I didn't do very well. <laughs> I guess not. Uh, I guess not. Hello. All right, let's 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 get Champ in there, guys. Register him for the race. Okay. He is a, uh, oh man, he's only rated C in stamina. Poor dude. Okay. Let's race him. Uh, let's just do. He's a, he's a sprinter. In which case, we'll do a shorter. And, uh, I don't actually know what kind of strategy I want to employ. So I know this is a very complicated screen, but basically it's the, the strategy is where you want him to kind of, you know, how, how you want him mm. to approach this race. So he can try and get out in front at the beginning or, you know, maybe save till the end. So I think we're, as a natural sprinter, I'll just try and have him uh, right lead the front. pack. Yeah. I think we'll just start with that and see how it goes. And I'm going to bet on a different Chocobo because I don't think Champ is going to win this. You're going to throw it, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't actually control. You don't actually control. You have you have like a little bit of control over it, but you're not actually steering the chocobo like you mm. were in the uh, in the Final Fantasy races. Uh, Final Fantasy VII races. Excuse me. So I can give him a boost if I hit X right at the right time. Hopefully, I did. Now, obviously, the boost gauge at the bottom fills up, and yeah, I am really not doing so well right now. Come on, champ. <clears throat> Are you, see, are you doing anything right now? I know, I control when he, I basically use okay, control you got the when inside he's track. Yeah, You got the inside Yeah, yeah, all right, here we go, here we're we go. We're just doing one lap? Yeah, it's one lap. All right, I'm feeling pretty confident about all this. All right, yeah, and he's, oh, actually, no, we, we, we just, we're golden now. Look at this, I can, I can sprint the rest of the way, practically. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Boost to the finish! <laughs> go, champ! <laughs> he's pulling away. Yeah, no, he's good now. I, oh, I should, I should only bet on the other dude, too. I should have put some coins down on champ. You gotta believe your own, your own guy here. Yeah. I guess so. Chocobo Racing. The classic yeah. music I love. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, that was the first race I've ever won, and I didn't even bet on my own Chocobo. Like a jerk. Yay, champ. Winnings minus 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was the Chocobo races, Damon. That was fantastic. All right. <laughs> now, does she really have wings, or is she wearing a costume? The verdict is out on that one, man. I don't know.